Grigori is the driver of the school bus, the only one in Oymyakon. With 500 residents, it is the coldest inhabited place on Earth. The average temperature in winter, minus 40 degrees Celsius. The school supplied the 58-year-old with a heated garage. This luxury guarantees that the engine fluids of the bus are protected from freezing and that his vehicle starts in these icy temperatures. In order for the bus to be able to drive in these extreme temperatures in the first place, Grigori has taken special precautions for the bus. Engine failure with children on board would be very dangerous. Therefore, the 58-year-old uses blankets as insulation for all the damageable, sensitive cables. This is supposed to protect the bus against the extreme cold during nine long winter months. Grigori keeps warm by listening to the radio turned up loudly, indeed, all the time. On her parents' farm, seven kilometers away from Oymyakon, Sayana's and her family's work in the stable is now done. The family's farm is so remote that the school bus cannot pick up Sayana and her brothers directly. The three of them still have to walk quite a ways through the icy cold. Their mother, Shigina, wraps her daughter in four different layers of clothes on top of which she wears another two jackets. As well as two pairs of gloves, a cap, and a thick hood. Often Sayana wears so many clothes that she is unable to dress or undress by herself. Meanwhile, the school bus still struggles along the ramshackle streets of Yakutia. Grigori needs to pick up nearly 50 children today and take them to school. Once Grigori fell ill, more than a third of the students missed class. If the bus breaks down yet again, it is dangerous for everybody. And this happens often in the coldest place on earth. <laughs> If it's that cold, the oil and the petrol can freeze. Everything working on fluids can freeze. Then I have to warm it up somehow. Otherwise, the bus won't start. The streets around Omyakon are in poor condition. Every pothole can become a trap out here. In the case of an engine breakdown, Grigori has 30 minutes until the temperature inside the car reaches the outside temperature of minus 50 degrees. The only bus driver far and wide is aware of his special responsibility. Carefully, he steers the bus around the largest holes. Out here, broken axles are not uncommon. At these temperatures, shock absorbers quickly freeze and become hard and stiff. Mountain ranges close the little village off from the warm airstreams coming from the west and the south. On the other hand, the door to the Arctic is wide open. Icy streams of air press forward unhindered. So in Oymyakon, winter lasts from October until April. The all-time record low temperature, minus 71 degrees Celsius recorded in 2013 by the local meteorologist. During the summer months in June and July, on the other hand, it might even get as hot as 30 degrees. The villagers, however, take rather more pride in low temperature records. To go to school in these ice cold temperatures is daily routine for the children in Oymyakon. It's high time for Sayana to get going. Sayana's siblings always join her. Her parents forbid her to walk this way alone. Their fear of her freezing to death on her way is too great. For us, this cold has become normal by now. I, too, had to go to school under these conditions. 
Sayana is still very young. But considering her age, she knows quite well how to deal with the cold. And the older ones help the younger ones. That reassures me a bit. Like nearly all children, Sayana goes marching to school. But it's not solely due to the cold. Under no circumstances may she miss the bus. It would in fact be better to be there a few minutes early, because the bus only comes once and does not wait. Without deigning to look at them, the three of them meet creatures which only exist here above the Arctic Circle, wild horses. With especially thick skin, they run free and can cope with temperatures down to minus 70 degrees. Unlike the reindeer, horses are not work animals in Oymyakon, and it wouldn't occur to anyone to ride them. Horse meat is a delicacy here, and exercise would make the meat tough. By now, the bus has done more than half of its tour. Several children have been picked up, and it's three more kilometers to Sayana's home. But then, Grigori is in trouble. Something's wrong. One of the rear wheels won't turn anymore. That happens quite often, I'm afraid. These are old tires, they spin. This definitely wouldn't happen with new ones. If the bus gets stuck out here, there is a serious problem. Oymyakon is four kilometers away. Nobody will come to their aid. Grigori must fix the bus by himself. Otherwise, it may quickly become dangerous. Just last week, someone wanted to drive to the neighboring village, Tomtor. His fuel indicator was inaccurate. He hadn't checked it. His car ran out of fuel out here. Had he not got as far as here, he might have been able to walk back. Well, he died. Sayana isn't aware of any of this. With hurried steps, she trudges to the meeting point through the snow. Sayana doesn't know that the bus had a breakdown. She might have just as easily have missed it. The only thing she can do is hope and wait for the school bus at minus 52 degrees. I hope the bus is still coming or I won't be able to go to school. A few minutes, the eight-year-old can afford to wait in the cold. Then, she must quickly return home. Sayana has been waiting for more than 15 minutes already, but still no bus in sight. If it doesn't arrive soon, she will have to return home. Four hundred meters away, north of the clearing, Sayana's father performs his daily duties. The firewood doesn't have to dry after it's been chopped. Due to the icy cold, it has become so brittle, one blow is enough to break it. And Sayana's father needs a lot of wood. More than 60 cubic meters is burned by each inhabitant on average every winter. That adds up 
to five truckloads. We live here and work here. Without the work, one cannot survive. And whoever doesn't work, dies. Of course it's cold. Life can be tough here sometimes. But then you just have to work harder. Sometimes we work for sheer survival. What more can I say? If it's extremely cold, I simply cannot allow my children to run around outside. Then they have to stay inside, play computer games or watch TV. The only way they're allowed to walk is their way to school anyway. For Sayana's parents, moving away from Oymyakon is out of the question. They decided a long time ago to live in the coldest place on earth. But Sayana should make her own decision, and that is only possible if she goes to school and graduates. Like many other parents in Oymyakon, they put Grigori in charge of that. As so often, the bus driver uses all available means to get his bus going again and to escape from the cold. Giving it a lot of gas and with a little bit of luck, he manages. But now it's shortly before eight o'clock. The breakdown cost him almost a quarter of an hour. It is quite possible that many children won't be waiting at the agreed meeting points anymore. But Sayana has held out. Just in time, Grigori picks up the freezing eight-year-old. The school bus. On the one hand, it's the only way to get to school. On the other, an unpopular necessity. The school bus is the worst thing. It's always loud, dirty, and too hot in there. The risk of a child freezing to death on his or her way to school is too high. By now, the bus is full to bursting point. It's loud, stuffy, but at least it's not cold. After the more than two hour drive, Grigori finally drives the crammed bus up to school. Sayana is happy to have arrived, and Grigori can take a break until school ends at 2 p.m. It's exactly half past eight. Sayana arrives in the nick of time with the school bell ringing. <laughs> <laughs> 